Good evening. We call to order this session of the West Valley City Ca Council and uh, note that we have a quorum present, but we have two excused members tonight, Councilman Tom Hume and Councilman Steve Bueller. They will not be with us tonight. With that, we will begin with our traditional opening. We will join together in saying the pledge. And so if you would all rise, we will begin our meeting. of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one my nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There is no justice. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll go right to our minutes, uh, February 10th. Uh, to the council for any comments or action. Mayor, I move for approval of the minutes from February 10th, 2015. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have the motion and the second. The motion is properly before us to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote to on that. All in favor of approving the minutes of February 10th, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. The minutes are approved. schedule our employee of the month award apparently the individual was not able to make it so uh, we'll reschedule that for a future meeting with that then we go to our public comment period uh, we have several people who have signed up now we note that after this public comment period we will have public hearings on the items on our agenda that is for application Z5 2014, the opposing one, that will have a separate public comment period. And then as well on application Z6 2014, Hallmark Homes and Development, that will have a separate public hearing portion. And then uh, as well, our uh, ZT 8 2014 uh, regarding the food truck regulations will also have a separate public hearing. So if you're here to speak on those, pass on this next one. You'll have your opportunity next. So now in our public comment period, Russ Tolbert and oh, Hallmark Holmes. I thought that was the last name. So I assume you're wanting to speak at the later one, correct? Okay. And uh, Mr. Burke, are on you on the here? later one, please? On the other one as well? Yes, okay. sir. And yes, Mayor. Deve. Jim Deve. Later. Later. Okay. All of them for later. Okay. We'll pass that down so we can see if she has the information. Uh, before we start our come public comment period. If I'm not mistaken, I think we had some scouts come in. Is that correct? Okay. Traditionally, we invite scouts who come to come up and tell us three things which we invite one of your young men to do. Which troop you are, what schools you attend, and why you're visiting us tonight, what you're working on. And you can both come up if you want, that's fine too. Just right here to the microphone. We want to pick up your voice. Okay, um, Troop 703 and um, um, half our troops not here, but me and him, we go to Matheson Junior High. Okay, and you're here working on a merit badge? Yeah, or? for the communications merit badge. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you very much. We 
welcome you here tonight. Uh, you should have a good meeting. We have several interesting items to cover. So, uh, not seeing any other further public comment items, we'll move forward. And Mr. Powell, do you have any comments for us tonight? Um, you know what? Step out here a little out of order, out of norm here. Is, are you Officer Priesto? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you or anything. <laughs> I just wanted to check that that wasn't the Officer for the Employee of the Month uh, okay. Award. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I have no comment now. Okay. To the Council, any comments? All right. With that done, then. Uh, we will now go to item 8 on our agenda, which are public hearings. Uh, first of all, we have uh, an application number Z-5-2014, filed by Lawrence Opposian. Uh, this is a zone change from agriculture to C1, neighborhood commercial. This is property on 3500 South between 6570, 6586 West. And this is part of a plan to uh, take their business there that has been there established for many years and do some additional items in connection with uh, preserving that property with some of its agricultural portions, but also allowing some commercial development there to make it viable over time. So, uh, is that enough introduction there? Did we cover that? Okay. Then with that, we will now open the public hearing portion. That is to consider ordinance number 1506, amending the map to show the change of that zoning uh, for Lawrence Opposia. With that then, we would invite anyone here to speak on this issue. Uh, to, in an orderly way, come forward uh, to our microphone and speak. Okay. No one has any comments? Some communication going on there, and then, there we go. And for our record, and for those of you who will come up, if you would state your name, and I think it's name and address, right? So we have that officially. Hey, my name is Lawrence Apotion. I live at 6570 West, 3500 South in West Valley City. Okay. And I'm the person that made the application. Uh, I don't know how much you want me to go into this because I think all of you are familiar with what we're trying to do, but basically what we're interested in doing is coming up with a way that we can preserve a quiet green place in the city for a very long time and that's uh, why we would like to be able to change the zoning on part of the property to commercial which would allow us to hold uh, events such as weddings on the property and that's the, the purpose of the, the zoning change. Do you have any questions for me? Um, any? Uh, we would note for those, uh, particularly our scouts, that this is the second time we've discussed this issue, as it is with all of the issues on our agenda. These issues are ones that we have studied last week. We now hear them for a second time, allowing an interval of time and discussion on that. So if we don't ask a lot of questions, that's not to be taken negatively. We've already discussed it. And so we're, we're anxious to be able to keep a green space out there and in order for us to do that uh, we kind of have a two phase plan this is the first phase which would allow us to uh, improve our garden and increase the size of our garden both the indoor and the outdoor garden that we have so that we could hold events there I think eventually we would expand the garden through uh, much more of our property. But in order to do that, we have to make this one profitable. And then once it's profitable, we would even be considering 
uh, a nonprofit charity, turning it into a nonprofit charity down the road. All right. Well, seeing no further questions from the council, thank you very much. And uh, anyone else here to speak on this issue and the development agreement? Uh, my name is Tamara Potion, and I live at 6570 West and 3500 South. I would just like to, to say that this green space and this garden we're talking about is not a vegetable garden, so to speak. We desire a beautiful garden. And I would just beseech you that, that you have vision so that we can have something like, like Bouchard Gardens or Thanksgiving Point or Longwood Gardens in our city. I believe that we have vision, my husband and I. And I believe that we can accomplish that, but we need your help. And I would hope that you would, you would give us that help tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are, is there anyone else here to uh, give input on this issue? My name is Chris Draper, uh, 6541 West, 3270 South. <clears throat> I've lived in this area for 20 years, and I've watched great alfalfa fields disappear, uh, high-density housing uh, pop up, congestion pop up. West Valley has a unique opportunity here to have something that they don't have. Sandy has it. Draper has it. Lehigh has it. Nothing like this is even close to the West Valley area. <clears throat> uh, Lawrence has a, a good vision of what he, he wants. Uh, he just needs your help in, in having this. Having open space and having something beautiful, especially along 3500 3, South, which uh, in large part isn't too beautiful, uh, is something that West Valley needs. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further comments? Seeing no further comments, then we will close the public input portion of this hearing, and we will now come back to the council. So back to the council now for comment. Uh, I just I have one question for the staff that more, more of a procedural nature and seeing as how there's a couple council members absent tonight five of us will be tasked with making this decision um, there's two action items here one of them is the amending the zoning map to the and then there's a development agreement to that um, I know the Planning Commission recommended uh, passage of this uh, contingent on a development agreement and I think we all probably would want the development agreement um, but I guess I, I'm just wondering what um, what happens if you pass the first action item and we can't come to an agreement on the second action item? Does it just kind of leave it at the C1 without any development agreement, or how would we work that? Okay, that's a good question. So obviously you're pointing out that, well, I guess... procedural standpoint it might be better and I'm going to approach Eric here can we talk about both these items together at the same time so that they can consider the development agreement therefore um, you know come overcome the problem of uh, concern about whether they change the zoning or not depending on the development agreement absolutely yeah okay okay and, and maybe in, in some ways it might be better to take the development agreement first and if we can come to some type of agreement which I'm hopeful we can then move to the to the zoning second that be, is that okay without objection from the council yeah and I know you know we can move items on the agenda
may need to do that by motion for consideration first. And looking over here, Sherry, for that. So you might want to do that. But as far as from a plan and zoning procedural standpoint, there's no issue with that, is there? Okay. All right. No, nope. we can do that. I was going to say, or else we can just talk about that yeah. or come to an understanding and then keep them in order. I, sure. Be, but I agree. I was I was sitting here looking at this saying, how can we make a vote on this without talking about the development agreement? Because that's where I think all of our concerns were. And I, I don't think any of us uh, are reluctant to allow the potions to, to build their gardens and, and provide this, this space. But to just blanket call it a commercial zone creates other problems with that. In other words, if we just make it commercial, they could choose to put something else there other than the garden. I know that they don't plan on doing that, but, but it would allow that to happen. So I think talking about this development agreement first so we know what exactly restrictions we would put there, I think is important. Okay. Yeah, what are the well I think I think we need to I mean we talked about this last week in our study meeting and <clears throat> asked for a few other items to be taken off the list and we have a copy of that so I guess maybe we just need to have a discussion about that and whether we're happy with those things that have been taken off or whether we want more taken off or or Councilman Vincent would you like to have a member of staff uh, to address that specifically or or do you just want to discuss it here? I think we can just talk about it okay. ourselves. I mean, we've okay. got it here in front of us. I think the one thing I was mostly concerned about was was the larger commercial uses and, and a couple of the items we had taken off here. I think this is so that uh, the potions understand so that they know where we're coming from. But, uh, Convenience store we had uh, taken off, fast food we had taken off, um, commercial condominiums we had taken off the list. Um, what else? Uh, parking lots and professional office were Shopping on the earlier list. list. Supermarket. So I don't know, is everybody happy with what has been, how this reads? So I think my only one that I'm still concerned about is the neighborhood grocery, which walkable neighborhoods, neighborhood groceries are nice, but I don't know how this, I know they're not asking for that right now, but as a possibility, you know, I'd have to look to the future 10, 15 years, if that would be acceptable there or not. That's under 5,000 square feet. Yeah, so it'd be small. Which a walkable grocery store is nice. So that's the only one that was kind of outside of what they were asking for for the existing operation that they're doing right now and what they want to do in the future. I have all the faith in the world that they'll do what they want. Right. But it's, if somebody comes in after, it changes it all is what I would like to protect the neighbors that are there now and in the future. Okay. Further discussion? Councilman Vincent. Yeah, and I know uh, Councilman Rushton brought this up last week in our study meeting is um, how, how do we track these restrictions in the future? I mean, let's say 20 years down the road, the property does change hands and uh, it's zone C1 and so the new owners just assume that they can build all these other items, these other buildings. How do we, how do we track that and make sure that, that these are Remember? Yeah. Why don't I, uh, if it's okay, uh, Stephen Mayor, uh, have Jody come up here and sort of outline for you that little bit of the process they use by which they 
you know, check on licensing, make sure that uses that are, are proper or properly zoned are going on in any individual property. That might that might help. Jody. Yes, if you would come forward. Hey, I'm Jody Knapp with Planning and Zoning. And um, basically, there's two ways to track any special conditions that are attached to a property. Um, the first is with a development agreement, it's actually a recorded document. So it's something that if they go to sell the property or somebody's looking up the history on the property, that would get pulled up with a title report. And then um, just kind of more at a staff level, we have our computer program, CityWorks, and we can attach flags onto a property. So anytime we look up the zoning, I mean, it's, we usually don't check recorded documents when we're just looking up a property. So it's just a good backup way that we would have that on our CityWorks program and a flag would show up that would let us know that there are special conditions on the property. Okay, so Jody, I just noticed um, in the middle here you have the C's and the P's. So C's are for conditional use. So if they did sell the property and a neighborhood grocery wanted to go in, that is a conditional use, so it would have to go before the Planning Commission? Yes. And all the landscaping and hours and all that would have to be reviewed? Correct. Okay. And so then there's just a few of these that are permitted uses that they could just sell and it could just go in? Yes. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, I guess that answers what they needed to know. Okay, thank you. I guess to thank you to that point. I mean, I I, I think if the apotions are fine with the schedule of uses that we're using as kind of the the appendix for this, then I'm fine with it. I, you know, I think the one in question that uh, some may have concern with was the uh, neighborhood grocery, but since it's conditional use, I I I'm kind of fine with it. I um, you know I, I think I'm on the other end to where I wonder if we're too restrictive and cause too many problems with, you know, to me it's okay, so you put in a, a, a neighborhood service establishment, which we've defined as a one of the uses could be a beauty salon, but yet uh, a cosmetic establishment is not a use, and I can see the, the line on those being. But is a permanent cosmetic establishment a tattoo? Or it's a tattoo, not a hair parlor? So which uh, goes so with a wedding center. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know. Okay. I, I guess those are the type of questions. I, I would like this just to be very clear. And I, and I think sometimes when we get, you know, too restrictive of trying to split too many hairs on things that we create some unintended problems. But I, I think, I guess just for the record and for the sake of the discussion, that I'm fine with this. I think if the applicant's fine with the schedule of uses, then, then I'm fine with them. Okay. Did that answer all your questions? Okay, then. I guess we're, if there's a desire for some action. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rustin. Uh, seeing as how our general plan calls for this area to be mixed use, and this is actually fairly low mixed use with the plans that are there and that uh, uh, the Apotians have done uh, been a cornerstone of the community and uh, have great plans for this uh, area that uh, I'm ready to move forward and uh, move for approval of Ordinance 15-06, which is amending our zoning map to change it from agriculture to a neighborhood commercial zone. Motion is properly before us. Do we have a second? Second. Councilman Vincent, we've got the second. And it's properly before us. Any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving ordinance number 1506, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. The ordinance is approved. Now we go back to the council again. Mayor, I would move that uh, we consider uh, and we, we take uh, resolution 1530 and, uh, and approve this development agreement uh, with the Apotians. Motion is before us. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilwoman Lang. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote then. All in favor of approving Resolution 15-30 of the Development Agreement, please say aye. 
Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passed unanimously. The resolution is approved. Thank you very much. With that, we now go next to uh, application Z-6-2014, filed by Hallmark Homes and Development, requesting a zoning change from agricultural to R110. And this is at 3700 South, 6400 West. And then as well, a uh, development agreement. And so those who are here, uh, let's see, did that introduce it clearly enough for everyone? Again, we've talked about this, but that's the item before us. So we will now open the public hearing portion. Those who are here to speak to this issue, we invite you to now come forward. First, my name is Russ Tolbert. I'm with Hallmark Homes and Development for the applicant. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody on the council. Uh, for hearing this application again. This has been a highly discussed and worked on very hard application. I also would like to thank uh, the planning staff, um, Nicole, Steve and Steve. I don't, we could go into their last names. Um, we've spent a huge amount of time on this project. Um, from the time it was heard back in September, I went back and checked on my notes and I have spent one or two days every week since September working with someone on the city staff on this project. So it has been discussed. Sometimes they get a little bit, um, I wouldn't say heated, but um, there's always two points of view and we had to work out those differences. I mean the city comes from one stance and a developer comes from another and that's what I, I have learned a lot in this process to see how the whole political or the, the system of this works. Um, and it's been very educational for me. So I am very grateful for their time that they have spent with us. Um, what, what we've gone through and what we've done, and last week we had a study session that I was in attendance, and I did hear loud, loud and clear some issues in that meeting. Um, and what we would like to do as an applicant, because there are some issues that we need to get resolved to before we present this formally or again to the council, we need to take care of some issues that were brought up in that study session. So I would like to ask for a continuance for two weeks so that we can get some of those issues resolved. Um, but I would like to address some of those issues tonight in my comments. Um, I think I've explained very well and I think you've heard from staff in the study session and everything how much work has gone into this and there's a few reasons for that and one of them was the council felt this property was very important so we heard that. The Newtons feel like this property is very important and they want it to remain as a legacy and so what we've tried to do with staff's help is to build a project that the city can be proud of that will continue that legacy of the Newtons as well as, you know, further generations down the line. Um, we've done some things like having an overall theme. We've talked about uh, the streetlights and the address blocks and some entry monuments. And we even talked where there's going to be a park inside the development. That's about an acre. And there was talk way back about the barn. And what we wanted to do instead of trying to salvage the barn is we're going to take parts of that barn off to make like um, pavilions. Use the material so it continues on that with some kind of a, a legacy type plaque thing in the park area to explain what this property is all about. Um, one of the property owners, Mary Jane, wants it to be somewhere where there could be some kind of a, an open market for people to sell produce. That was one of her ideas. But we're going to make it more something that the whole community could use. There's also a lineal park, as you've seen through the concept plan, that we make a walkway so that people from this subdivision can have access to the elementary school, but then also connect on to other 
pass. I think Hunter Villages has some walking paths through there, so we've tried to work our way around to connect that so in future development could do that. Um, so with those things said, and we've, we've taken a lot of energy in designing new plans and elevations and different things, uh, we had to meet what staff wanted, what we needed, and what the Newtons wanted. And that's been a very difficult process to try to get all of those things together. We think we've achieved that. Um, the Newtons are happy with what we've got designed on there. The house sizes are bigger than most of the houses in the city. Um, the, the aesthetics with stuff on them. Um, I need to address one issue, and that was the issue of stucco. And I know that that's a bad word to the council. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but the reason why we wanted to have stucco in this, and, it, and it's not full stucco, if you, it, I know that you've studied the, the um, development agreement, and there's a lot of architecture features that we need to do in order to qualify for some stucco. It's not an economic thing. It's not a price thing. It's more of an aesthetics thing, so it's been commented, I think, several times about Councilman Vincent standing on his front porch and being able to look through his subdivision and seeing the different phases in it. Well, that was one of the ideas behind this was if we allowed a little bit of a mixture with stucco along with the fiber cement siding, it would add a little bit of a difference to each one of the houses instead of having them all the same. Okay, with that said, we are more than happy to to not push the stucco issue anymore because that is a city ordinance. We asked for it, we heard you, we're not gonna push for it. We just thought you wanted to see our point of view why we asked for that particular building material. Um, the other one was the three car garages. We have no problem with adding more three car garages. The only reason why we would have considered that being a less number is we want people to be able to pick and choose what they want in their houses. Some people, because of economics, can't afford a three-car garage, but yet they want a four-bedroom house with a two-car garage. They have a bigger family, and the three-car garage is not what they want. They would rather have more square footage. That's a simple um, example of what we're trying to do with the three-car garages, but we're happy to add, increase that percentage in the development agreement. Um, the other thing that was a concern was we had eight plans that we presented to the council. We can add more plans to that. We put that together so that we would have a good presentation to show you. Um, one thing that we are trying to work out is a way that we can add new plans into that mix. So we need to have some kind of a gauge to add new plans because this is not going to be a one-year project. This is going to be a five, six-year project with all the lots and with all the property that is in there. You know, we, we do have a first ride on Tom Nixon's piece. And we've been talking with Eric Bishop. You know, we talked with Bill Burke. Um, we've talked with everybody around there. Um, so our overall goal is we want to build there for a long time. And so we, but we, as things change, you know, people's tastes change and we want to add new things to the portfolio of plans. Um, one of the other issues was how the one acre parcel of Bill Burke's piece would affect the layout. Well, the way we laid out that original concept, we would just slice off that corner of the property until we have an agreement with Bill Burke. We met with him today and had a good discussion with him. It's always fun to talk to him. Um, uh, there's been lots of discussions with him, not only with staff, but with us. We've tried very hard to come to an agreement with him. He was open to our discussion today. We offered a lot of things just like we've done in the past. Um, it was very encouraging for us. He might come up and say something different. I hope he doesn't. Um, but once again, I'd like to thank you for looking at this. And, and like I said, we would like to ask for a continuance for two weeks so that we can get more prepared. And then you can look at this stuff in another study session of all the things that we're trying to solve the issues. Thank you for your time. Any questions from the council? Okay. Oh, Councilman Vincent. I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, you know, you heard some of our our items from last week, and I, I've been thinking a lot about about this for the during the week and about 
about the three-car garage versus two-car garage and a few other things. But one thing I, I would I would like is if if there isn't a three-car garage, then at least there's enough space as far as setbacks goes that you know, if later on they wanted to add the third car garage on that, that they don't have to go through the process of coming to the Planning Commission and the Board of Adjustments to get a setback variance to do that. That, that, that the property's large enough that if six years down the road they want to add that third car garage that they could. So if they don't initially start off with that, but at least there's the ability from a property standpoint for that to happen. And so that was one thing that uh, I, I thought about as, as we're doing this. And I know that, that a lot of the constraints with this property are based on where the stub roads are already coming in there. But I, I also, and this probably goes more towards our overall design standards for what we're looking to do in the future. I would like for there to be a variance, and I don't know if the others of council agree with me, but this is that there's a, a variation in setbacks so that there's when you look down the road it's not just a straight line of homes. So there's some variation in, in setbacks. Some of them are thirty feet, some are thirty five feet. Um, and of course that would mean that there needed to be deeper lots if, if that was going to happen. So those are just a couple of items that I I was thinking about this week. Uh, also just to our our, our um, public works department. I think we all like the idea of, of having these cul-de-sacs that kind of break things up, but I just wonder from a public works standpoint and snow plowing and, and access like that, how, how that works. And so I, I think it's not really up to you, but we'll, we'll need to have that discussion with our public works department, so thank you. Any further questions? Councilman Vincent, maybe a question for you uh, on these setbacks in your line of sight, you know, the mall being in a row. Could that also be done just by, for example, in some homes you extend the garage forward rather than the whole home? So there are variations to that other than just moving the whole house. Yeah, that, that's one way of doing it. And another thing that, that I've always liked wanted to see is the ability to have side-loaded garages so that the garage isn't the prominent feature of the house and of course again that means wider lots and so when we talk about having a variation of styles and lots I think you know I think for some reason we're, we're, we all grow up in Utah with the Brigham Young straight roads and square lots and and that's kind of how everything's been built but if there was some way to get a lot of variation so that you could have side-loaded uh, garages as well as front-loaded garages. But again, that... Well, I could address that if you want. Um, if you remember the concept plan, we purposely tried to make so the roads didn't go straight through. Right. We jogged them around and made lots of loops, and because of hearing before that cul-de-sacs were something nice, and they are nice to live on. I grew up on a cul-de-sac. We played kick the can, if you know what that is, many nights on that cul-de-sac. So uh, the variation of the setbacks can be done by the road design, and we think we've done achieved that. Um, there are a lot of corner lots in there so that we can get probably side entry garages to meet on that. So that would, that would help. Any further? Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here to speak on this issue? Mr. Burke? Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. The name is Billy Newton Burke. I live on 3801 South, 6400 West. One of my last requests when I was here last was that you would get some of the traffic off of 6400 that's going up and down there from the Mountain View Quarter. Now, Mr. Tolbert's request was for a delay on this. And since he and Mr. Nixon were in my home about three and a half hours ago, tells me right off that they need more time to negotiate with you people over how this is going to be developed. Uh, in some of the Newton family meetings, 
And I might say, can you imagine a heathen like me and there's three Mormon, ex-Mormon bishops in the family? It shows that miracles will happen. And mayor or manager, I saw you on TV and you're a good representative, but you didn't apologize for your salary. But then Butch Cassidy didn't apologize for Robin Banks either. And look at what a folk hero he is. Yes. <laughs> but I would recommend that West Valley give Mr. Tolbert some time because this is Helder Skelter. We definitely are a long ways apart because there's an old polygamous home there that I'm very well and much involved with, and of course, family secrets shouldn't be told, but I guess in the Newton and the Dunford family, there was polygamy back two or three generations, you know. It does happen in Utah, you know. Uh, maybe I'm envious of them that uh, I asked the wife, you know, about that, and uh, she shook her head this way. I don't know what. But I would recommend that you give him more time to try and straighten this out. At one of the family meetings, this acre could have been straight. This shouldn't even be coming about today, but one of my uncles was too cheap to pay the going price. And therefore, here we are today. And thank you for your time and effort in trying to do a good job here and I hope you'll hold Mr. Tolbert and whoever is the builder hold their feet to the fire and do a good job because I can say this about my grandfather Newton he said I ch challenged him one day about what he did writing a check out and not ever seeing anything he said Bill a man's word should be his bond. So, with nothing more, I hope you'll consider giving more time and get this done right. I know my cousins want their money as soon as possible, but the stock market may be the top end, it may be bad for them. Thank you, Mayor and Committee, because uh, this needs some more time. Talk doesn't cost anything. I do a lot of it, but I don't say much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Is there anyone else here that wants to speak on this? You would come forward and introduce yourself. Uh, Joseph A, uh, 905 South Military Drive. Uh, I'm the property owner of the biggest uh, piece of property that wasn't mentioned uh, in the discussion right next to it. So. I have direct involvement in how this is going to work out. Uh, I have a de development standards agreement, not a de development agreement. I, I suspect they're the same thing, but I'd like to know that for sure. So in our extension, which I, I don't have a problem with, if that can be defined, it'd be uh, really helpful. So we know we're talking about the same thing on this. And, and one thing, the uncertainty. The, even though we're not interested at this point on uh, development, we, we need to be looking down the road and what's going to happen. And this, this has been going on for a long time. And it would be good to get something settled so we, we have something to plan with. I understand it's a big decision. And we're all interested in, in the long-term uh, development out there. But you know, we need to get something moving here and be able to understand, you know, what five years or two years or three years is going to be. I come here every time when we talk about the fact that since we're not going to be in the development, we're still going to be irrigating, we're still going to be farming, doing things up above there. I want to make sure that's all taken care of so there's no flooding issues, no problems with the subdivision down below when the wastewater comes through. And as you may know, Sunday night somebody hit a fire hybrid on 6400, it ended up in the ditch and it flooded out my property. So this is not something that's far-fetched. This was just from a fire hydrant. So, and I appreciate your help, thank you. Thank you. 
Council, any questions? All right, is there anyone else that uh, is here to speak on this issue? Seeing none, then we will close the public hearing portion of this discussion for Comar Combs, application Z6 2014, and come back now. That is officially closed, the public comment period. Back to the council now for further discussion or action. Councilman Rust, sorry. Uh, I'll try to be brief here, but uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, they're not ready to go. They're not ready to go. We need to postpone things to give them the time to get this worked out. I want to point out a couple things, though, and not take anything away from Mr. Tolbert, who has done, uh, I think, an exceptional job of getting the project um, to this point, and have a lot of confidence that. Uh, and be able to work through the last couple things. Um, what I want to express, I guess, a little bit of concern slash frustration on is that, you know, we're in the middle of this moratorium right now. We're discussing such things as Council Member Vincent brought up as far as just how setbacks go. Um, I know the Newton family, when they came in, they were concerned about um, having a project that uh, had high standards of uh, water conservation and and uh, I know that's one of the things we're now discussing also on, uh, on our moratorium, as well as maybe a few other things that uh, may come out of uh, our moratorium to make our uh, neighborhoods uh, the best that they can possibly be. With that being said, you know, a few weeks ago it was, was that, um, you know, the applicants and the property owners wanted to push forward, you know, and wanted to ask for an exception out of our moratorium to come before the council. Uh, saying that you know they've gone as far as they can go and they're ready to just get you know a yes or no answer on this to which um, I was all in favor of I thought yeah they're ready to go and they've hit a spot to where they feel they can't go any further then I will vote for pulling this specific project out of moratorium and consider it and give them a definite yes or no uh, up or down vote on the issue and you know we gave them that uh, courtesy and it wasn't a unanimous vote there were some that voted against that and said why are we bringing this out of a more you know we still have all these questions on the moratorium but you know all indications were is that you know they're 100 percent and they're ready to go so with that i guess you know i am in favor of postponing it I, I guess i wonder if two weeks is is the right thing or i guess we could just kick it down another two weeks or we could kick it till april but i guess i'm uh, I, i'm I'm foreseeing, you know, maybe just the, you know, what's going to happen in two weeks, you know, raising the question of when the project comes forth and we say, hey, you know, this is great, but, you know, when we come out of our moratorium, we are going to have a little bit different guidelines on uh, landscaping and water conservation. We might have a little bit of different thing on uh, setbacks, which may or may not be preferable um, to this. Uh, you know, one of the things that was brought up is I understand the, the, uh, the these eight plans are going to, going to need to be added to uh, and that and I don't know just you know how just uh, an indication on that being resolved because you know I, I don't feel with our discussion last week and with the fact that uh, you know I think the city's been burned too many times on a point system and it's going to be similar to this or look like this you know if we're going to be able to work some type of uh, system to where it has to come back to the city council to add it on or at least to our planning commission and so you know, I, I'm just, I guess, bringing these up now because I, you know, I, I, I guess I'm a little nervous for two weeks, but it's going to be, you know, some of the more things. So I kind of want to open the dialogue so we can try to get it all out on the table or just say, you know, maybe we want to you know, spend a little more time than the requested two weeks to make sure maybe a couple other things that are going to be coming down the pipe won't raise major question marks um, when we proceed with this. So, I want to hear your thoughts on that. I think my only concern is seeing it back here in two weeks gives them a week to add to when we see this dissection next week. I would almost rather have it continued without a date specific so that they have the time and we're not being asked to kick it down the road over and over, make sure they have all the ducks in a row and then bring it to us. I'm a little concerned with the date specific. Further comment? So 
So if we make a motion to continue this to a date, we just just motion to continue to no yep. no date. That's correct. Either way, date certain or no date certain. Okay, I make motion that we uh, continue application uh, Z six to fourteen. 2014 to date uncertain. Motion is before us. Do we have a second? So will that take care of both actions? If we just no. do by the application number? So they got to yeah. take the same action on the next item, right? Yeah. So they don't. Okay. But uh, okay. All right. the, the motion could be expanded to include those applications. So could so, Councilman Vincent, would you like to amend your motion that hasn't been seconded yet? And, and while you're amending motions, you, you might want to include the fact that I'm sure when this comes back, you know, we've already closed the public hearing on this. We probably want to include public hearing on. Oh, yes. <coughs> I, given the nature of this discussion, I think that would be very appropriate to, might be. to reopen or even though we've closed it now, we can certainly open it then and have further discussion. Why don't you second it and you make the amendment then for the amendment. I'll second the amendment. He hasn't even So we have the second from Councilwoman Lang, Councilman Rustin. I, I would just say as, just a, as a clarification that we're including both the application as well as the uh, the two action items as well as having it be a public hearing for what it is. Back. An amendment? Do you need a second? I guess you don't. Well, it actually, well, no, it actually needs unanimous consent to amend. Yeah. So your days in the legislature, they had substitute motions, but in Robert's Rules of Order, it's there's no such thing as a substitute amendment unless I, I there's know very little consent. about Robert's Rules of Order. We use Masons, so. Well, and I will point out, you don't need an amendment to reopen the the public hearing. No, you can just reopen it. The amendment was to include the other. Uh, the, two, the ordinance and the resolution. Sherry's point was because you're delaying the application and not taking action on either action item, you don't have to. You, you're in effect not taking action on either one of them by, by delaying it, by continuing it to be more technically correct. Sherry, will get, yeah, she'll get the language but, right. Yeah. Well, we're not taking action, but the mayor over the dais said, you know, I closed the public hearing on this. So just for legal sense, I think we want to make sure that it was known that the public hearing will be continued. Well, we'll announce that and certainly remember that the council can open, you know, an item for public discussion. And I think with a simple majority, that could technically take place on any item. Yes, my understanding is you can reopen a, a, a public hearing even though it's closed, or you could have continued it, you could have left it open without closing it. Correct? It's just yes. Yeah. At legal peril. But either way, I mean, however you want to do it. If you want to make an amendment to that effect, just for a clarification process, as you, as you stated, that's fine as well. If you, yeah. How many people understand the more truth? I was trying to make it easier, but I'm not helping here, so. <laughs> so we have the motion before us to continue, and then you're making an amendment to Just including both items in a public hearing okay. I told you. to the maker of the motion i accept that okay Good. without objection then the motion is amended further discussion councilman norton i just want to say that i appreciate all the work that's that's gone into this and i appreciate russ's addressing our concerns I just want to add one more concern. Um, I'm, I'm really worried about the lot size, um, that, we're, that this would be R110, but this development agreement includes many lots that are under 9,000. That's a yeah. serious concern to me. I don't, maybe I'm alone in the, in the council really? with that concern, but I just wanted to voice that. Good point. Okay, thank you. Yes, and we do appreciate uh, uh, everyone who's been working on this. We recognize their work and diligence in uh, trying to meet uh, the desires of what we believe the city 
needs at this point in time. So thank you for your input and feedback and participation in that process. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place the motion for a vote. All in favor of the continuance of the all three items plus recon or we would well, how was it? Reopening the public hearing. I guess that's the word. Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. It is continued. Next, we go to item C on our agenda under 8. Uh, this is application ZT8 2014. This has been filed by the city to for some text amendments regarding food truck regulations. Uh, we had a discussion on this last week in our committee or in our study session. And uh, I believe that the, the items that were requested and brought up there have subsequently now been amended in. Because I've already conceded. So, and I believe, I was trying to remember, was it the religious organizations was the amendment? And that is now in there. So, um, with that introduction then, we will open the public hearing on or on application ZT-8-2014. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? No one here to speak to the food truck regulations. Given that, then, I will declare the public hearing portion closed. That is now closed. Um, then we now go back to the councilors for further discussion or action. Mayor, I move for approval of Ordinance 1508. Councilman Vincent then moves to approve Ordinance 1508. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Councilman Northfield has that. The motion is properly before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving ordinance number 1508, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. The ordinance is approved. Next we go to item number nine, our resolutions, beginning with 15-32. This is to uh, authorize the city for a development agreement on the TM Nixon Family Limited Partnership. This is on five acres at 3750 South, 6770 West. I believe this is close to that same parcel of land. Is that correct? Yes, so the the to the south, I believe it's the south. The south And so that request is before us. And the question comes up on this issue, of course, is if this relates to the uh, items that we have previously discussed, and perhaps it is not ready for action tonight, but that is up to the council. To the council. I, I would say that it needs to wait because they want to follow whatever uh, development agreement we have with Yes, probably so. It's going to be hard to approve this without knowing what that development is going to be. So, without continuing, Fair, but we continue resolution 15 32 to a date uncertain. Second. The motion is made and seconded. Any further discussion? There will not, right. since it's a resolution, there will not be a public oh, hearing. That's right, that's right. Yeah. You're right. I'm still stuck back on the other section. Anyway, seeing no, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of continuing resolution 15-32, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion is continued. We now go to resolution 15-33. This is an agreement for traffic signals at three intersections on 4100 South, 13th West, 27th West, and 40th West. 
with UDOT, Taylorsville yeah, City, so, and so others. He doesn't sell the um, for, I believe these are more intelligent traffic signals offering better traffic control. And so, with that introduction to the council. But then we don't want to leave it with you. You know what I mean? So May I move for approval of resolution 14-33? We have a motion to approve resolution 15-33. We have a second. Second. We have a second. The motion is properly before us. Do we have any further discussion? If he says Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving uh, resolution 15-33, the improvement for traffic signal improvements on 4100 South at the various different intersections. Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passed unanimously. The resolution is approved. Finally, resolution 15-34, uh, for an agreement with Best Friends Animal Society to assist in improving animal services here in West Valley City. This is an ongoing thing. They've been participating with us, and so this will help us maintain our no-kill shelter status. And they will offer, I'm sure, many other uh, services and assistance as well as far as uh, the animals are coming. With that, then, to the council. It's always been. Mayor, I move for approval of resolution 15-34. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Captain Vincent's a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving resolution 15-34 for the Best Friends Animal Society agreement for services there. Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. The resolution is approved. We now go to our consent agenda. On our consent agenda, we have six items. You've heard it. Six. six items. One, a quick claim deed. Uh, three, temporary construction easements. And two appointments to the planning commission. One for a regular member, one for an alternate. Do you want to address any of those separately, or shall we'll leave it to you to make a motion to the council? Mayor, I would move that we approve the six resolutions that uh, make up our consent agenda. We have a motion before us. Do you have a second? Second. Councilman Vincent, the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the resolutions on the consent agenda, 15-35 through 15-40, Please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. The items on the consent agenda are approved. I do not believe we have any further need for an executive session. So I believe, unless there's anything else, that that concludes our business for the evening. So one last motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. We are adjourned.